Are you trying to say our education system is not good? Our education system is not good because our education system is uh, actually training us to become workers, not creators of wealth. You know, we need to be creating wealth. We have everything. We've got oil, we've got food, we've got water, we've got everything to create wealth. No, so our education system should shift from creating workers to create wealth makers. Congo is the richest country in the world. Definitely. You know that, right? Yeah. But the people living here are not rich. No, they're not rich. Why is that happening then? How are you all doing? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, right here in Congo. It seems I'm gonna spend so much time in this beautiful country because you know what? I've been telling you that it's time for Africans to make Africa home again. It's time for Africans to invest in Africa. And it's time for the youth of Africa to know that agriculture is the future. And that is why I'm not giving up on you guys, man. See, how I got here, you have no idea. You see why I'm carrying this cloth is because mosquitoes are still biting me. I've been here for two good hours just because of you. I mean, I don't know what keeps me moving, but I feel like it's because of you. You know what? Do me a favor, like this video, share, and um, you know, you have to subscribe if you haven't because mosquitoes are biting me. I have to sit on moto to get here. You see, if I don't die in Kinshasa, I'll never die anywhere in this world again. I'm, I'm not even scared anymore, you know, so as you can see, you see ponds around me, yeah? Which means that I'm coming to a young man who left South Africa, came back to Congo to start a change. It's a pleasure meeting you, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you too, bro. You're the guy who is forcing young Congolese to uh, venture into agriculture. Exactly. Starting a revolution. Agriculture revolution. Agriculture revolution? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> the revolution is actually happening, it man. It is actually happening. We're making you know, a change. Let me know when you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Oh, the first thing that comes into my mind is home. But if I go deeper, it's... You know, Africa is so special because all the four elements come together in Africa. Water earth, hair, and fire it comes together and it makes the, the beautiful country, the beautiful continent, the beautiful people with all the resources, natural resources that we have. That's a beautiful yeah. description for the continent Africa. Yeah, I mean, let's come to Congo. Yeah. We are in Congo right now. Yes. When you hear the name Congo, what comes into your mind? Leopard. Leopard? Yeah. Because Congo, Ngo means the leopard. Oh, leopard. Leopard, yeah. Leopard, the king or le leopard, the animal? The, the animal. Okay, yeah. jeez, man. I, I was so mad. I wanted to slap <laughs> this dude, man. Like when you hear Congo, leopard. Yeah. No, leopard. Okay. The animal, yeah, because it's the, actually the real king of the jungle. It's the fastest, it's the strongest. You know, that spirit that what our ancestors got inspired from, and they called Congo. Congo is to be like a Congo, to be like a leopard. I'm from Congo, obviously, from, from Africa in general. And um, I am, I, I like to think of myself as the, the, the starter of a revolution, of the agricultural revolution in aquaculture, agriculture, and aquaponics. So, um, beside that, I'm an agriculture engineer as well. I did some engineering in agriculture, I studied some agriculture engineering. Yeah. You're born and raised in Congo? Yeah, born and raised in the motherland. You grew up here? I grew up here. And then, and then I, I left uh, Congo in 2014 to go to South Africa to further my studies in agriculture. How long did you stay in South Africa? I stayed for six years. Six years in yeah. South Africa? Yeah. So you went to South Africa to study what? To study agriculture. Agriculture? Agriculture. Bro, like, listen. Yeah. Oh, agriculture engineering. Yeah. You know, some of us want to be going to abroad to study medical, yeah. I mean, electrical engineer, mm -hmm. mechanical engineer. Why would you go into agriculture engineering, man? Because I knew agriculture is the future in Africa. You know, if you want to be a billionaire, don't go into uh, uh, medical schools and stuff. Be, study agriculture. Because you know what? Let's say in Congo, in the next 20 years, we're going to be 100 million people. Mm. Yeah. And we, are, we have the fastest growing population in Africa. In Congo, the majority of people have less than 17 years old. So these people need to eat, they need to feed, they need to drink. Agriculture is the way. 
See, <laughs> I, I, I have to ask you a few questions here. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming from a continent where, I mean, the youth don't value agriculture. Yeah. We're coming from a continent where when you tell your parent that you want to start a farm, they will tell you that is everything wrong with you. Yeah. When you were in school, <laughs> way back in South Africa, what were people saying when you, you had, um, I mean, a hobby for agriculture? Yeah, yo, yo, I, I got that from, not only from friends, people, we're like making jokes like, you know, you just you just go study vegetables. It's fine for you, you know. <laughs> and then um, also in my family, not my close family, but my extended family, my uh, um, aunt and uncle, they didn't understand the choice. They're like, why didn't you go study finances? Why didn't you become a doctor? Sorry, man. The, 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 the mosquitoes are really biting me. I want to know, yeah, you, you learned a lot. You learned so much in South Africa. Mm -hmm. What kind of legacy did you leave behind in South Africa? You know, um, I, I, I started the Agriculture Student Society, which is a student society. It's the first of its kind in agriculture universities. The objective is to bridge the gap between students, especially black students, and uh, the, the professional world, you know, in order to share experience and actually to bring solution to the problems that Africans experience in, in food, uh, food industry. So I wanted the students in agriculture to come together, to share experience, to be like, you know, what can we do to get to, to fight food insecurity? And that's the student society I, I, I came up with. It's, but, there it's still going on. But, but I mean, what really inspired that to, to start something like that? I realized the, the, um, the contrast in, in South Africa. You know, people who were involved in agriculture, they were not, they were like, uh, uh, they were not African students. So well, mostly Western students that were involved in agriculture, their own land, their own farms, you know, they have all the resources, financial, uh, economic resources. But African kids, Africans, black South African, they didn't have access to those things. Mm. And so they, they just saw agriculture as just like the third choice when they go to university. So what are you doing in DRC right now? Yeah, I'm... Um, actually farming, fish farming, and training people how to do fish farming. You know, since September 2020, I, I trained over 50 people how to do fish farming. You know, and five of them already started their businesses and adventure. So, uh, uh, yeah, I do fish farming, aquaponics farming. Aquaponics is actually mixing fish farming and agriculture. Sure. Yeah, the way in such a way that the, the, the fish waste are used as fertilizer, organic fertilizer for plants. Mm. And I also do agriculture and farm management. So, because you know, I realized something, many people here, they just own farms just for, for the fun of it. They don't, they don't see actually, you know, you could actually feed a whole population. So I'm like, you know what, give me a farm, give me your money. I'm gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna produce food for people and then you can get your money back. So I also do farm management. I, I want to know, yeah, are Congolese embracing this modern way of farming? You know, it's, um, our people are always reluctant to change. You have to take them through a journey for change, okay. actually. Yeah. And uh, what we're we doing since I've been doing training, I see more people getting interested in that. And because people actually realize that you, you don't have to have a big land to actually do farming. You can do farming in an urban setting, yeah. in a small area, but you still have uh, the result. So people are slowly uh, accepting, yeah, accepting the change. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of fishes do you rear in here? We rear tilapia mm. and uh, catfish. <laughs> yeah. How many ponds do you have now? How? We have over 60 ponds here. Over 60 ponds. 60 ponds? Yeah, over 60 ponds. And how many fishes in total? How? We produce over 20 tons of fish per year. Bro, I, I, I really want to know, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I'm here to inspire the youth, right? Yeah. But sometimes we also have to let the youth know the truth. Like, that's why I want to know how you did it. Yeah. How did you do it? Where did you get a capital? Did you just wake up parents? Who gave you the money to start what you're doing? Oh, you know, in South Africa, I was working, so I got a little bit of savings. And also, you know, I, I, I started actually doing this modern uh, recirculating aquaculture mm. what I, I was still a student yeah so in my uh, student room i started a prototype so in a small bucket i put fish and i could grow tomatoes so that's the prototype that may actually made me win the african entrepreneurship award i'm the only congolese who won that thing in morocco wow. Wow. and it gave me some more, some more extra money as well and that actually helped me to come here and start my business i feel like um, you're an inspiration Thank and you. so many youth have to learn from you yeah. Uh, where can people find you? Social media handles, emails, so that people can learn from you. Yeah, people can find me on, that, on uh, my website, Ndunda Aquaponics, 
And it's the same name with Instagram, Dunda Aquaponics, Facebook, Dunda Aquaponics. But the website, they can see all the, the services that we offer. We offer trainings, farm management, uh, uh, installation of system. Yeah, and you can just reach me out there and you're going to get in touch. Can we do some feeding, then I will ask you my next questions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank Let's you. Let's go. This is the fish feed. Okay. Um, it's a mix of maize and um, um, housefly larvae. You know, housefly. Yeah, housefly larvae is very. It has a lot of protein, and fish needs a lot of protein to grow fast. Okay. So we leave it open so that we can get egg uh, fly uh, giving putting the eggs here, and then we're gonna let it for three days until the eggs hatch, and then that's how we we, we feed the fish. The fishes are not coming out. Yeah, the fishes are a little bit shy today. They are shy? Yeah. Especially tilapia, they are quite shy. How can you be hungry people. and shy at the same time? <laughs> they wait for it to come down. Oh, okay. You see that net over there, it's called appa. That's actually where we put the fingerlings until they get into a certain uh, uh, size, over 50 grams. 50 and we're going to put them in, in, in the ponds. And also we have a hatchery, like a, a recirculating hatchery that uses solar power and recirculating water to produce fly. Where there we can produce a lot of fingerlings actually to, to serve all the ponds. So you, you, you ponds. produce your own fingerlings in here? Yeah, we, everything is produced here. We produce our own fingerlings. Uh, we grow them until a certain and size. And the feed? And the feed as well. We get the, the, we get the maize. We get the maize from outside. But then we produce the, the housefly larvae and we mix with them and then we can, that's how we feed them. Wow. The problem with Congolese is, it's like the low income, they don't get access to good food. And that's why we are on the under nutrition is, the okay. rate is high. So what we're doing is we're producing fish just for the low income people. So we sell them at the lowest cost in the market, the lowest price in the market, so that we can give them nutritious, nutritious food at I, an affordable rate. I feel like this is a way of giving back to the society. Exactly, that's all about it. You know, when you give back to the community, the community will raise you up, you know. It's not about making money, it's about giving back, helping the people, and when you help people, that's how you get money. And I keep on telling people, whenever you're starting anything, yeah. think about the impact first. Yeah. Because when you make impact, that's when you're gonna make an income. Exactly, I love that. So exciting to be feeding fishes yeah. out here. No, Mr. Pagra. It's so therapeutic, man. Come with me. Let me take you to the hatch. Uh, the rain is back. We have oh. plenty of water. We just direct the water here. It makes this thing turn, and then we generate electricity. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the hatchery. Oh, okay. Yeah, this hatchery works with solar power. Here, you can see the battery. The batteries stuff. for the... Yeah, and um, here we have the concrete pond. Mm. This is where we keep our stuff, like uh, data, keeping data. But this is where all the magic happens. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So, what do they keep okay. the fishes? These are baby fishes, you can see, fingerlings. Oh! Yeah, there are over 100,000 100, here. 100,000? Yeah. I, 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 you know, I went to a shrimp farm yeah, yeah. and I saw something like this, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. These are the, the, the same technology. It's the same water, it goes here, filtration, and it goes back. It's a recirculating system. So where we, this is actually where we grow up uh, catfish fingerlings oh. up to a certain level before we, we send them uh, to the uh, pond. To the pond, yeah. I can see this one is getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. You have to get out very soon. Yeah, because it's 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 up the other one. It, it's up Can the other know? one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So now we just cleaning the system to have a clear water that will allow us to check out all the dirt and stuff. How many people work in here? Here there are two people that operate here in the yeah, in the hatch. Yeah, but in total, in how many total people? we have over twelve people. All right. So what happens is when they get to a, up to a certain level, okay, we um, sort them out according to sizes. And then you send them to the other, to the other system here. You mean you sell it? You sell them to? Or no, we sort them out into sizes. We sort them out. Yeah, into okay. different sizes. Okay. We get the bigger ones together, the smaller ones together, and the middle ones together to reduce the mortality because you know catfish, the big ones always eat up the small ones. Okay. So we sort them into sizes, then we put them in those uh, tanks there. Okay. Yeah. 
now I know everything about um, fish farming. Yeah. It's time to ask you my next questions. Okay. Can we just go out and I'll ask you my next questions? No problem. Thank you. No problem. Bro, after moving around in here, yeah. I'm just want to tell you that I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Bro. You're doing an amazing job right here. And I believe that your story will inspire many Africans mm -hmm. to also believe that agriculture is the future. Okay. But I just want to ask this question. Yeah. Is it profitable? I mean, whatever you're doing, is it profitable? Yes, it is. Of course it is. It is. And we're doing it at the cheapest cost in the market. It is profitable. And so if it's profitable, then it, I mean, it's worth it. Yes, it is worth it. It has all its reason to be. I want to ask you, yeah? Yeah. Starting up this is not that easy. I mean, we've seen the end result, yeah. but definitely there were challenges that you faced coming from South Africa. You know, definitely. the system is not different from whatever that was happening in South Africa and the system yeah. in here. Let me know um, some of the challenges that you faced when you got in here. Yeah, I, I think the first challenge was to gather a team of people that actually understand the vision because, you know, we want hide it. We live in a poor country, so when people find a job, their end goal is to make money, you know. And our end goal was to make a change. So uh, uh, that was the first challenge: to, to gather a team of people that actually understand the journey and they understand the vision and they're willing to be part of it. Yeah. And afterwards, uh, it was mostly to get equipment, you know, because most of the equipment you can see here they are imported. Uh. Bottom from outside, here they, we, we can't find, we can't source them locally. Uh. And uh, so there's a challenge of transportation uh. and all of that, logistics. Uh. Yeah, and then we, 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 we try to, to turn the challenges into opportunities and actually, to, for example, for the, for the, to, to get a team of people, I just had to train every member of the team, you know, in mm. order to get them, to give them the knowledge and actually to... to so which means you, you, you train your own people? Yeah, I train my own people. Congo is the richest country in the world. Definitely. You know that, right? Yeah. But the people living here are not rich. No, they're not rich. Why is that happening then? Be, 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 because there are so many reasons. But when we talk about agriculture, we don't produce what we consume. And that's actually what we're doing. Our, our objective is to produce what we consume. We don't produce what we consume, we import them. We import them from Asia, Asia from Europe, from wherever. And that's what makes us poor because in order to buy something from China, uh. you have to have dollars or uh -huh. the Chinese currency. You can't buy it with your local currency. And that's, that's, that makes a problem, create a, the, the cycle, the vicious cycle, where you have to borrow money to import food and then you, you borrow them at high interest rates. And that's how create the, the, whole cy the, the whole cycle. So we need to produce what we consume using our local infrastructure, infrastructure uh. local manpower, like we're doing here, in order to get us uh, uh, out of the, the, the poor zone of African countries. And I also want to say this to add it to what he just said. Yeah. The narrative of Africa is the richest con continent in the world, but the people are so poor, that narrative needs to change. Yeah. I always say that it has to be these not wet. Yeah. We talk a lot without any action. Yeah. It's time for every African out there to get involved. Because you can't sit somewhere and complain that why are things not moving in Africa? Mm -hmm. But you, as an African, you are not ready to partake in the change that we're looking for. Exactly. Change that mentality. This is why I do such videos. Yeah. I just want to tell every African out there, be part of the change that we're looking for on the continent. Take yeah. it as if it's your responsibility. Yeah. My brother, we've got so many Africans watching us right now. Yeah. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? The message would be, be the part you want to be. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you. If you, you want, the African, uh, you want, it to, to, you want Africa to change, then join us. Join the revolution. Join the agricultural revolution. Join the aquaculture revolution. Because we're making an impact. We're training people. You know, you know what we're doing is, uh, if you tell me, if, if you ask me a question, would I change would i end hunger in congo i'll say no because i cannot do this alone thank you this finger cannot wash the whole the, the whole face we have to come together we have to be umoja unity we have to come together and actually to make that change together and that's the, the message i'm giving to my african brothers everywhere in the world come join us join this revolution let's produce for our own people and when we produce for our own people we can then pretend to be rich that is the the message 
If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would that be? That's actually what I'm doing. I'm changing the education system. I'm training people to know the, the, the new technology, how to produce more with a little space, how to produce more with, at, at a low cost in order to feed the population. Are you trying to say our education system is not good? Our education system is not good because our education system is uh, actually training us to become workers, not creators of wealth. You know, we need to be creating wealth. We have everything. We've got oil, we've got food, we've got water, we've got everything to create wealth. You know, so the, our education system should shift from creating workers to create wealth makers. I, I, I want to tell you all watching this video is that are you guys really ready for this generation? Because I believe that <laughs> this generation yeah. It's up to something. If you are part of this generation, get involved and let's make this happen. The revolution is happening. Like I tell you, it, it, the revolution is all about carrying guns, carrying knives. No. It's happening on the ground. Yeah. And I just want to tell you to get involved. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, And um, I'll check out your website. You yeah. all should check out what he does and um, yeah I mean check out his Instagram social media handles and go support what he does and if you really want to, to learn from him yeah reach out to him and let's make it happen yeah your final you. message anything you want to say thank you very much thank you uh, uh, for creating so much impact in Africa inspiring young generation because the African population is young and that's where we, our focus should be we need to target these people to inspire them to tell them they can actually change narrative you know if you're born poor it's not your fault but if you die poor that's your fault, that's your fault. thank you so much for thank watching you. subscribe and be part of this awesome family i'll yeah. see you in the next one